In this video, we're going to put together a cash receipt schedule for the months from March through August. And this schedule is important because it will eventually fold into our cash budget schedule. So we're just trying to figure out how much money we're actually taking in from our sales. Now the problem is when you offer credit to your customers, that means you're giving them the option to pay later. So when you make a sale, you can't just assume that you're going to receive the cash in the same month. So that's why we're doing this. Let's read through this problem. It says Simpson Glove Company has made the following sales projections for the next six months. All sales are credit sales. So all of them are on credit. So I have them from March to August. And the first line on my sales receipt template is sales. So let's go ahead and put them in. So March is 41,000. April is 50. May is 32,000. June is 47,000. July is 58,000. And August is 62,000. So even though I'm just looking from the period March to August, I will need to know what the sales are in January and February because we'll end up collecting uh, some of the money from those sales in the months that I'm looking at. So in sales in January and February were 41,000, so I'll put that in, and 39,000 respectively. So now what I'm trying to do is figure out when I'm actually going to collect the cash. Now in real life, usually you have the historical data to help you make that decision, or you have knowledgeable people that are in the company that monitor that and would be able to tell you. But in our case, they're just going to arbitrarily tell us a percentage. So it says experience has shown that of, of total sales receipts, 10% are uncollectible. So since I'm just looking at the cash, I can't even put 10% down here. So that's just bad debt. But then it says 40% are collected in the month of sale. So I'm just going to just help me with this. I'm just going to put 40% right beside um, January. And then 30% are collected in the following month. So I'm going to put that down. And then 20% are collected two months after the sale. So I'm going to put that down. Now, it's hard for me first to identify the pattern. That's why I color coded everything. But once you have the pattern down, then it's easy to make these calculations. So let's use January as an example. So I made a sale in January for 41,000 and I was able to collect 40% in the same month. Then in February, I was able to collect 30% of that. And then in March, I was able to collect the remainder, 20% of that. And then 10%, I think, is uncollectible. 41,000 times 20%. There we go. So that's why I highlighted those all in yellow, because this is the sale and this is the cash that I received. So let's go and do the same thing for February. So I collect 40% in February, I collect 30% the following month in March, and then I collect 20% two months after, so in April. March, 40% of that sale in the current month, 30% next month, and 20% two months afterwards. And I'm going to keep going. April, 40% in the same month, 30% the following month, 20% two months afterwards. May, I'm going to do 32,000 times 40% because I collect that in the current month. I'm going to take 32,000 times by 30% because I collect that in the following month. 
and then I take 32,000 and multiply that by 20% and that's collected two months afterwards. With June, I'm gonna take 47,000, that's the sale. 40% is collected in the current month. 30% of June sales is collected in the following month. And then 20% of June sales is collected two months from June. Same thing with July, 58,000 in the current month, that's 40%, 30% in the following month. And because I don't have September or I'm not looking at September, I don't put it on my schedule. But if I was putting a balance sheet together, then anything that I haven't collected from July would go onto my balance sheet as accounts receivable. And let's do the same thing for August, 62,000 times 40% I collect in August. And then the remainder of August sales, when you collect in September and October, will be accounts receivable. So now all, all I need to do is add up all my total cash receipts. So I only wanna add up the cash. So it's the cash from the current sales plus the prior month sales and the two month sales. So it's just these three added together. And I'm not even gonna bother totaling January or February because those are incomplete because I don't know what the sales were prior to that. So an easy way in Excel is if I want the formula to be the same, instead of having to type it in all the time, you can just drag it. So just drag this across and then it'll subtotal everything for us. So then these amounts here is what we'll end up putting on our cash budget when we do that next.